what what was that? I have no clue. Someone has to answer for this. Yeah, but who? Canada. Canada, Canada has to answer for this. Canada. Hold exactly. on. Exactly. It's far away, so it's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Hello? Uh, hello, is this Canada? What? No, this is Colin. You might know me from my podcast, No Such Thing as a Bad Movie, or my critically acclaimed portrayal of the Rock Hyrex in the 2006 Disney animated classic, The Wild. <laughs> Doesn't anyone knock anymore? Now found in bargain bins all across the US. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah, close enough. What did we just watch? What did you guys do? Ah, I see you're calling about Ryan's babe. I knew this day would come. Yeah, explain yourself. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hello and welcome back to the 73rd episode. Good, bad, or bad, bad, the show where we watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, it is the Ryan Spabe episode. <laughs> oh, we teased it long enough. We're finally delivering. We finally watched it. Finally reached that carrot. <laughs> yes. Uh, we had to get Canada on the line to answer for this travesty. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of their fault. It is a little bit their fault. Uh, Kyle... What the fuck was this movie? This was a film that started and then kept going and didn't know where to end. And then just ended. And then just ended. <laughs> That's literally it. It's the weirdest. This. So what I, I figured out halfway through what this is. It's the Odyssey. He's, oh, yeah. Because yeah, they have Homer's right, Odyssey. Right, right. It was I know. painful. Right. I, I agree. I, but at first, I didn't realize that's what they were going for. And then I, I was like, oh. Did somebody go blind? Oh, nobody goes blind. Uh, but there's definitely. and But that's the thing. I was like, I don't even have. I don't I don't think this movie deserves. Because what I wanted was I wanted somebody to go through and, like, figure out, like, if the all of the little vignettes in the movie have, like, one-to-ones from the Odyssey. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put that task on anybody to go do the critical analysis to figure that out. It sounds like a fucking nightmare. Just go watch Oh Brother Where Art Thou. It's much better. (laughs) Yeah. But he's absolutely doing a modern day odyssey is what he's going for type of thing. It's what he's trying to do, I believe. Trying. Trying. Uh, so you jump right into this movie, no credits, no opening logos, no nothing, a woman in the woods with a guy. Right in. Yeah. Right in. Uh, and so this opening's wild, because this character I thought was going to be important. No. Not in the movie after the first five minutes. No. <laughs> oh, flight leaves in a half hour. We should get going. What the? So she's walking through the woods, and immediately you can tell, oh, this entire thing is 80 yard. Yes. Are we going to an isolated cabin somewhere here? Keep walking, Red. We have been driving all day, and now this walking? I feel shitty, and I'm tired. The entire film. Yes. The entire film. And the, the, the entire, I, I don't the, mean a lot of it, the all entire of it. film. All of it. <laughs> And that you and, and you can tell painfully because while they were in the studio doing the ADR, the director was like, "All right, all right you can't go too high on it yeah. because otherwise it's gonna yeah. it's gonna you know yeah well peak peak, it, they didn't know how to adjust their levels or yeah, yeah. So, so if you're gonna if you're gonna yell just like kind of yell kind but, of but yell not but really. dial it back. <laughs> you tell me now, how far do we have to go? I've been looking for that rock for boy all over. When I find that son of a bitch, I'm gonna blow his head off. Nobody, nobody. Hurts my little angel and gets away with it. Every performance in this movie, it what it felt like to me is that some the director was forcing somebody who wasn't in the movie 
doing the ADR at gunpoint saying, but didn't give them a script, didn't give them a script and said, just watch their lips and then you're going to, we're going to redo it and you have to match their lips perfectly. <laughs> and I'm not telling you what the lines are. It's like people trying to like, uh, uh, like quickly, like, like get as many words into the line so that maybe it matches up a little bit. Yeah. Yellow. Where the hell uh, are you? Yeah. yeah. Over an hour Can I call you back you in a few minutes? Again? Yeah. Yeah. And especially my favorite of all the ADR is the father. Y yes. Yes. Not not my <laughs> the greatest ADR scene in the entire film is the bar scene. Everybody knows I'm a reasonable guy, but if you cross me again, I'll break your fucking neck. Where you have two separate character voices coming out of one yes. guy's movie yes. lips. <laughs> You've done it again, Bill. I'll have another one, Jim. No more today, Bill. Please escort this gentleman to the door. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. The dad's ADR in this movie. It's great. Is wild. It reminded me of like, oh, this may be a similar 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 sim situation to uh, Love on a Love on a Leash. Is that what it was called? The dog movie where whoever's doing this voiceover is like, fuck this. <laughs> Ah, fuck you. Fuck this. <laughs> I'm Alvin Flang. Yeah. All right, grab on, you pizza face cinder block. So he says this is going to be your resting place, and he's got a gun to this woman's head, and we don't know who this guy is or what's going on. We have zero setup for any of this. Mm -hmm. and, she, and she says, you stinking bastard, and pokes him in the eye. You stinking mean bastard. Oh, and then uh, she, he drops the gun, and there's a scuffle. She gets it and shoots him, and strawberry Kool-Aid pours out of his stomach. Uh, yes. All over his fucking shirt. It apparently didn't phase him that no, much. No, he is slightly inconvenienced by being shot right in the chest slash stomach by a gun. You shot me. You shot me. The, the sound he makes, he's like, he goes, oh, geez, after she shoots him. Oh, shit. He goes, oh, geez. Oh, shit. It's like the most Canadian yes, reaction exactly. to being shot I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, geez, you shot me. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's fucking Oh, amazing. man, that's going to leave a mark. <laughs> And then he like chases her through the woods with a gaping gunshot wound in his stomach. Hey, slow down for a second. I got a, I got kind of a flesh wound going, you know? <laughs> it's so great. I will throw, it's more Minnesota. I will yeah. throw absolutely that most of this interview, this, this episode. Yeah, there's a lot of, and there's, there's some great uh, stories in this, yes, in are. this movie, uh, but they're, uh, there, there's a great A too. Yeah. <laughs> some good news for Ryan for a change, eh? So it, it turns out this guy was her family's security. It doesn't matter. This plot's irrelevant. She murders this guy who was going to murder her. I think we ultimately find out it had something to do with money from her family or something. There's yeah, like a well, news story on the TV at one point. I think she's the daughter of, of a senator. Yeah. Evidence suggests it was Westgard who heavily drugged his wife, Krista, the senator's daughter, to implicate her in the murder of her mother so he could inherit the Adamson family fortune. Police also found the wounded family security guard, Ian Parker, who confessed his involvement in the crime. Something like that. And this is like the security guard and he was going to kill her to get her money or something. Who knows? It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It truly does not matter. Mm -hmm. uh, she hijacks a car, um, she, uh, which is Ryan. Dri yeah, driven, driven by, by the titular by Ryan. <laughs> the titular Ryan. Uh, and as to who the titular babe is, no, we have no clue. I assume it's Connie. Who's yeah, the, but she's like not. She's not in the end of the film. No. <laughs> Which is at the end of this movie we'll get to is bonkers. Um, so they uh, she take, hijacks Ryan's car, and I love. There's some great choice dialogue here in this initial scene. She goes, "Hi, my name's Sally. That's not my real name. I'm Sally. That's not my real name." <laughs> like immediately says, "My name's Sally. Uh -huh. That's not my real name." It's like. Why would you say that's not your real name? Okay, I get it, like you're on the run or something, but like, just say your name's, well, okay, cool, great. Whatever. Ryan. Uh, and then she's like, it turns out she, I didn't understand this. She starts like going, oh, mom, I'm sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry, mom. Yeah, okay. I'm really, really sorry, mama. Oh God. How did I, mama? How could I have done that? 
Put yourself in Ryan's position here. Yeah. A crazy lady just came with out of the gun. woods with a gun, is forcing you to drive because she can't. She can't. I was the whole time, I'm like, why doesn't she just take the car and she's, uh, she explains at least, I don't know how to drive. I can't exactly. drive. Exactly. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I can't drive. It's not difficult. Yeah, but, yeah, but, really. But okay. the entire time she's going, Mama, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, if, if you're right, you're like, I'm what dead. the? I'm gonna die. Yes. I'm gonna die. What? I'm gonna die. <laughs> if I could kill my own mother, you are nothing to me. Now drive. Uh, I, I'm really sorry. I can't drive. Great. Um, uh, and this was written, we find out, by Ray Ramaya, PhD. Who yes. the fuck puts the goddamn yes. PhD in the, what? in the credits on a movie? Just wants you to know, by the way, he's a, he paid a lot of money for those goddamn letters. He's going to put them on his movie credits. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you going to help me? What? You said you have to take a piss break. Well, how the hell am I gonna piss? Are you gonna pull the zipper down and help me? So he has to pee. What is it with this guy and peeing? We watch Ryan pee like four times in the first 30 minutes of mm -hmm. this movie. In action, like an angel. Mind closing the door, please. There's mm -hmm. more pissing in this movie. It is wild. Where are we going? Uh, to Rita's place. Who's Rita? And where are we going? Rita and I went to grade school together. We were both born on the same day. And then they're gonna go to Rita's, but we don't ever know who that is or care because we never see her exactly. again. <laughs> we should be there by 10 o'clock in the morning. Come on, let's get going. Uh, so then they're they're in the diner or something. They get a news. There's a news story on, and we get a courtroom reporter. <laughs> I oh love this God. guy. This guy is like, <laughs> why in movies do they like? Hey, let's get a shotgun mic and stick like a frontal mic, a front mic cover on top yeah. of the shotgun mic. Yeah, and then just be like, that's a news mic. Yeah, and my favorite thing is that he holds the microphone near his face. <laughs> like this yes it's like he's talking to it from like a foot away he's like reporting live from the county courthouse we bring you the latest development in the brutal slaying of senator barbara adams and then uh new evidence suggests the daughter did not kill her mother crystal westgard is no longer considered a suspect in the case however she is still missing and then we get a flashback Oh, God. Because he explains that, so she's in some trouble. He goes, I've had some trouble in my day. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Compared to the hell you're going through, my troubles are nothing. Well, I grew up on a small farm. Knew this girl, Connie, all my life. My bike got ran over when I was a kid. That made me sad. Then, then we get a flashback in a flashback in a fucking flashback. There, this is inception <laughs> level it shit. truly is. <laughs> So we flash back to him in college, and uh, Connie, we we're introduced to Connie, and she's wearing a red vest, and she wants to get with Ryan. She's in love with Ryan, and it's unrequited love. He does not care for her. No. Uh, he wants to do his own thing. Ultimately, he breaks down and does go out with her, but there's one scene where she asks out a random dude in jeans on a bike to go take her to the bar. She goes, you're paying, and then hands him $20. Hey, hey, you wanna go for a beer? Okay. You're buying. Wait. <laughs> and then uh, she gets hit by a car? Yeah. It's not your fault. Go. Go away. Are you okay? Uh. I, I, and then we flash back further. Yes. Yes, the car the car impact triggers a, a recession. It's, back. it's like it's like bizarre PTSD within PTSD. Yeah, yeah, and then we get back, and apparently these two have known each other since they were little kids. Ryan, Ryan. And there's a scene. We find him getting his bike, and his bike gets run over at a gas station or something. something. Like it that. doesn't matter. But we, so he's been he's known this girl forever. I thought he got abandoned at the gas station. I it it does it's it's really weird. Also, I I noticed uh, there's one point some kid pulls out money, and Canadian money looks like Monopoly money. Yes, it does. <laughs> 
Sorry, your your your, your currency is silly. Your, it, it has the queen on it. it just, yeah, your currency happen. is fucking silly. <laughs> Like any any good daughter, she of course steals her family's money yes. from yeah what, the monopoly money. The monopoly Takes money. the monopoly money. And uh, I'm just gonna go buy uh, just go buy a bike. And yeah. Everybody's like, okay. Yeah. Hey Ryan, look what I've got. Wow. It's exactly like my wrecked bike. It's yours now. And then she buys a bike for Ryan, and he hops on it's it like, and just bye. bails on it. Bye. <laughs> He's like, thank you, next. Boom, gone. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. I love that. Her just standing there, he just fucking rides away. She just bought him a bike. He's just nothing. Just gone. I was like, what a boss. What? Ryan? I want to ride too. Baby, bye, bye, bye. Um, and then her mom, I got this line. Her mom says, Connie. Come in for some chocolate shake. Come in for some chocolate shake. Some chocolate shake. Is that a Canadian thing? What? Saying that? Like yeah. that? I would know. I, they speak normal English up there, Kyle. Well, you know, it's, it's like uh, <laughs> they got that French stuff in there, you know? Uh, yeah, and parts of it. But no, it's come in for some shake. Some, cho some this chocolate is, this, shake. Isn't this a Saskatchewan, right, or something like that? Or? I don't know where this is supposed to take place. Uh, maybe yeah. it's not Montreal or no, no, yeah, it's, it's not it's, Quebec. It's further west than yeah, that. Um, it's not the French uh, Canadian part. Come in for some chocolate shake. And we get double establishing shots of an apartment. We flash back to college time now, where we're we're pulling back through the Inception. Or or models. or we went even further into uh. see his future. Um, yeah, like tight loops or times a flat circle, man. Um, and so we're, we get, I love, we get two establishing shots of this apartment building. It's like a wide pan down of the apartment building and then it cuts to a different wide pan down of the same apartment building. Like you only need one establishing shot movie. You don't need to. Connie, wait, Ryan didn't mean anything. He doesn't care how much he hurts me. He just doesn't care. Calm down. Uh, and then, so we go, and then there's something at the bar, uh, I think, because Bill's drunk. Con yes, her and this, this is where yeah. the ADR is just... Yeah, you've done bold. it again, Bill. <laughs> hey, I'm having another drink. I'll have another no, one. get out of here. You've done it again, Bill. I'll have another one, Jim. No more today, Bill. Please escort this gentleman to the door. Uh, so that's the little girl's dad. He's an alcoholic. And I, at this point, I'm trying to untether what timeline we're in. I'm like, wait, are we back? I thought we were in college. No, we're back in the little girls. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Um, but then we find out Connie tried to kill herself. She took a bunch of these sleeping pills. Take her to trauma one. Or he broke up with her or yeah. something, but she tries to kill herself. She takes a bunch of sleeping pills, yeah. which causes her to bleed. <laughs> but she also no, slit her like, wrist. Slit her yeah, wrist. I know. But it's like, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. If you're going to commit suicide, not that I'm advocating it, you want to do things that complement each other in that in that you know, initiative. Like get in a bathtub and cut your wrist. Or, or something. You would you know, think, yeah. Or, or well, mix well, your drugs. And they say, <laughs> they say, they do say... Uh, she didn't, the way she cut, later in the movie, they go, the way she cut her wrists wasn't going to kill her. So we think it was a cry for help and not an actual suit. That's what they no, say at the end of the movie. They do say that. She's fine. We tested the contents of her stomach and found no trace of the sleeping pills. Also, the cut on her wrist is not life-threatening, which suggests that this suicide attempt was staged for attention. Uh, she is obsessed with Ryan in a very unhealthy way. And Ryan uh, decides that's what he wants at the end of this film. Is that you, Connie? Listen, don't hang up. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna be home in about an hour. We don't see any growth from her, really. No. She like apologizes at one point to somebody. I mean, we really don't even see any growth we don't see from her. Ryan. Yeah, we don't see any. No, this is not a, a movie of character growth. This is a movie of things occurring. <laughs> this is what this film is. <laughs> this is a movie yes. where things happen. Yes. 
And then so the dad's really mad and he's drunk and he goes to try to kill Ryan as they're reading as their as their hippies are sitting in a field reading get, poetry. Get, out, get his shotgun, <clears throat> get the shells. Yeah. Go out into wherever these college students are gathering and sitting, start firing shots. Yeah, sitting in a field reading the the Odyssey to each other. <laughs> Come fill the cup, and in the fire of spring, your winter garments of repentance fling. And so they try to kill him, and we watch him pee again. He runs away. He's got to pee, man. Yeah. He's got to pee. Yeah. I've been looking for that Rockford boy all over. When I find that son of a bitch, I'm going to blow his head off. Nobody. Nobody. Hurts my little angel and gets away with it. And oh, I, real quick, when he stops reading before the dad gets there, he's reading and he's like reading the Odyssey where he's like blah, 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 blah. And then it, <laughs> as he's done, he sets his book down and goes, oh, wow. Has but a little way to flutter and the bird is on the wing. Huh? Ah, <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, it's so deep. Oh, wow. <laughs> so wow, you know, that's a... You know, I just got done. We got done with the Cyclops Island. You know, that's really interesting stuff. You know, he, blind, he got blinded by nobody, you know? Sorry, Canada. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Colin. I'm so sorry that you agreed to be in this episode. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And then there's, uh, he hops in his car. Uh, and it's, I think it's a Pinto. <laughs> I'm not joking. This might be a Pinto. We'll look. Run it. Somebody, somebody it's look. Not, it's not a fucking Pinto, man. I think it's a Chrysler. <laughs> But still, <laughs> it looks a bit like a pinto. Oh, okay. But this is the part where Brian, you know, Ryan, Ryan doesn't exactly have the greatest no way to approach how to solve problems. For just instance, runs. you were just shot at by another human being. Yes. With who, who had intent to kill you. Yes. What is your solution? Drive to America. Isn't that what he does? Yes. Yeah, Is that a yeah. going to the local authorities? No, no, nothing. Just, uh, I'm going I'm to go to America for a while. Bye. Run. That scene in the field was the, the largest single gathering of Canadians in the history of the country. There was like 12 of them. Um, I'm aware you have cities. <laughs> No, for God's sake, you're already drunk. No. Mm. I want to see my little girl. He's somewhere in the city and I'm going to find that son of a bitch. Oh, it's one of the other things I love about this movie is you can tell there are scenes where the actors in the moment were fucking going for it and are like doing this yes. very dramatic. Which, which completely undercut by the ADR. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's <laughs> my favorite thing. They are fucking going for it and the oh. ADR captures none of it. <laughs> Absolutely zero. <laughs> Please, Bill. You're very upset. You're not thinking straight. Just let me talk to my son. It doesn't matter, Beth. Your boy drove my little girl to kill herself. Oh, for God's sake, listen to me. They're like, you, you can see on the actor's face, they're like, and then I just, I didn't know what to do. And the oh, 80 hearts. And but then I didn't know what to do. <laughs> it's stupid. It's not, I love it so much. Wait, wait, forgot the... Eh? <laughs> now my son will I don't never need no lectures. Now get the hell out before I throw you out. <laughs> the mismatch between the performance and the ADR is fucking amazing. Hey. We got the baby in the truck. All right. So now what? Take him to the hall. You got it. Uh, and I was like, okay, this is where I realized, are we ever getting back to that story at the beginning with that woman? No. Because she gets on a plane and flies away no. and it's gone, gone forever. <laughs> Bye. This is amazing. I, this scene is so wild to me. He, this is where he really started. As he, he runs and goes to America, this is when he starts his, his series of hijinks, which is what this movie is. Mm -hmm. It's little vignettes of, like, nonsense that he just kind of gets himself into. Hi. Need any help? Yeah, I got a flat, but no jack. So yeah, it's just scene to scene of little like he gets into situations that are of his not of his own making, you know, like he just like mm -hmm. gets mistaken for people and like nonsense or like he runs into a weird person or something. Um, and this one, his first one, what? Just people trying to sell him a car yes, on the it's side of the road. Fucking wild! I was like, what is wrong with you, Ryan? Like he goes, he he. There's a, they're they're changing their tire and he goes to help them change their tire. It's just like Canadian couple, and uh, the the wife is like. I hate this car. How much do you want for your car? I'm going south. 
can't sell that car, man. <laughs> yes, you can. How much do you want on top of our car? Marianne, don't start with this again, all right? I want your car. We'll give you $1,000 for your car. And he goes, okay. $1,000 US on top of the trade? $1,000? Look, look, th this car isn't worth 1000 No, it's got a new engine to spring and it runs well. No bad luck, madam. <laughs> it's a deal. Why would you do that? Why would you ever just sell your car to a random couple on the side of the highway? That's, it's, it's, I don't understand. I don't understand it at all. Um, also, this has the great line where the, the wife says, she's listing all the things she hates about the car. Yes. One of which being, I don't like this shade of green. It's, it's a blue fucking yes, car. Very blue. <laughs> don't listen don't to her. I don't like this car. I don't like this color green. I like the color green. Later revealed as teal. Teal, yeah. In the news story, that yeah, they say teal. Uh, I mean, she's right in the sense it. it I, when she says I don't like this shade of green, you couldn't because it's not a shade of green, so you can't like that shade of green because it's not. If that makes sense. What's your name, young man? I'm Ryan. What do you do, Ryan? Go to college. <laughs> Give this nice young man an extra 500 bucks. And he, I love, he immediately gets in the car, turns the radio on, and it's a new story like, Local stores have been finding counterfeit American $100 bills for the past few days. Police had no leads until this morning. The big ripoff, the counterfeiters, a couple in their mid-30s. Basically, they have a bunch of funny money, uh, which I don't know how they distinguish between that and real Canadian money. And, and <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh, also, and then, so he, okay, I gotta set this up, because early on, he says, when he's talking to that girl, we get this whole flashback, he goes, it's all started uh, when I met a girl in college. I knew this girl, Connie, all my life. Oh, she's nice and outrageous sometimes. And my troubles really started when we were in college. And then we flash back to college, or when I was with a girl, a girlfriend I had in college or whatever, and we flash back to college, and we, I thought this was going to have been, like, years ago. Mm -hmm. We find out... Because then we go back and we go all the way up to current time where he, we get back to where we started the movie. And he is, it was like a month ago. Like this whole story when he's like, uh, it all started, all my problems started when I dated this girl in college, in college, in college, flashback, flashback. Oh, it was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, literally know, like you know, a fucking couple weeks ago. All my problems started two weeks ago. Yeah. So then he tells... Uh, Oh, I think he's still talking to the woman. She might not have disappeared yet. I think because I think we're just she's about to. Mm -hmm. They're talking in the diner, I think. And he says she tells him, like, you should need to tell your family. You need to go back and confront them. She's like, go back and confront them uh, and prove your innocence. I think you should face them and prove your innocence. You're right. And I'm like, innocence of, of what? <laughs> of what? What the fuck did he do that he needs to prove his innocence? I don't know what he's supposed to be guilty of. I mean, okay. He has a bunch of illegal stuff done against him. I yeah. don't think he does anything illegal himself. Yeah, I, I don't understand what he was supposed to go prove his innocence of, but sure, fine. Also, I love, so she, they have a whole conversation that we watch where she goes, she says explicitly in their conversation, I always, I, I get into more trouble from running away. Uh, so I, you should face your, face your problems. Look at me. I've gotten into more trouble by running away from the situation. And then she leaves, and she leaves him a note. She leaves him a note that says the exact same yes. thing yes. that they just said in the last goddamn scene. I know I'm not so good at advising you, but I, I can tell you one thing. Please don't run away. I've gotten into more trouble by running away from the scene rather than face them and prove my innocence. Look at me. I've gotten into more trouble by running away from the situation. I think you should face them and prove your innocence. He opens the note and he she's like- He opened it and it was her script for that scene. Yes! He literally read the sides from the scene before. <laughs> what is happening? And then my favorite part at the end, it says, love you, Ryan. Love you, Ryan. And I'm like, you met this man five minutes ago. <laughs> what? You picked him up at gunpoint. You don't, what is, what is going on? Did she have reverse Stockholm syndrome? Yeah. What's going on? Oh my God. They've known each other for like less than a day. Love you, Ryan. Uh, and her name is Krista. So that's, 
And then we get this, this is where we get the first mistaken identity. And I got very confused because he's leaving the airport and there's a guy that walks in with a limp who looks just like Ryan. It might be the same actor. It's very confusing. Sorry. Come on. But turns out this guy is some sort of gangster, some sort of criminal. Yes. And another rival gang or family, whatever, is there to get him. And But they mistake Ryan for him because Ryan, while he's walking through the parking lot, steps in a pothole and twists his ankle. And has a, <laughs> I, I fucking know, man. It's so weird. It's so goddamn weird. <laughs> this is the greatest kidnapping yes. I have ever seen on yeah. film. And we've seen, what was the one where they boxed in that, that woman with uh, semi trucks? Oh God. What was, was that? Was that overkill? It might've been overkill. Yeah. That's a way That's like our 10th episode or something like yeah. that. So, this one, they throw him into a trunk, they take yeah. that vehicle and put it into another vehicle, <laughs> yeah. and then they drive that vehicle to like some sort of storage housing unit? Why would you just not drive the car? I don't understand any of it, man. I don't understand any of it. They have to it. really make sure yeah. that he's stuck there. Yeah. In Macbeth's words, we are the non-parade. The flesh has been sullied. Hey, Shakespeare, say that in English. And then we get the great Shakespeare character. Yes. What the fuck is this it's guy? It's amazing. So there's a guy who just quotes Shakespeare all the time. Very interesting guy. And also on the phone call, one of them says, Do says you- Shakespeare. And he goes, what's Shakespeare? Talk decent. Talk Shakespeare. <laughs> who is this Shakespeare? Where the hell is he from? Jersey? New York? Toronto? Do, do you think that the guy, the uh, director, writer of this film, the the PhD, do you think it's in literature? <laughs> right? <laughs> it must be. Uh, he's very obsessed with, yeah, the classics. He likes the classics. He has lots of references to the classics, the Shakespeare, uh, the, the great epic poems of uh, Homer. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we meet Shakespeare, the character, uh, I think here's the thing with these these gangsters. I think he realized, you know, that sort of thing where like when you're making a movie, you want your 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 henchmen to like have a thing. They like need a thing to distinguish them. Yeah, because so, well, it, it, that's that's a brilliant thing. That's right. true throughout true. film and story. Right. Because your gangsters for let's say I don't know, go back to Overkill. Your yeah. gangsters were basically just a bunch of goons with guns. Yeah. Whereas if you go to No Contest, No Contest, yeah. Perfect yes. henchmen. They have actual uh, personalities, distinct personalities that make them interesting in their own different ways. Effective. I must compliment Cal on his design work. <laughs> Total fucking cycle. Hey, I like that guy. Uh, and so this movie tried to do that with the two main two guys. One of the guys is obsessed with Shakespeare. The other one's entire character arc is... I chew on a cigar like this the whole time. <laughs> Guess what, Shakespeare? We're going to the lake for a picnic. Uh, he just chews on a cigar the whole fucking time. That's his character thing. Uh, we watch Ryan piss again. Real great. Oh, after they drug him right in the ass. They stick him right in the ass with yes. a needle <laughs> through his jeans and drug him. Romeo crept quietly into Juliet's tomb. But you desecrate the silence with his storming and rage. So then uh, he's like, I got to piss. So he goes in the bathroom and Shakespeare standing outside the door quoting Shakespeare at him for some reason. And they're discussing how much they like Shakespeare. And again, we're watching him piss for the fourth time in 40 minutes in this movie. Uh, and we see him though, and I'll tell you this much, Ryan got a fucking rocking booty. We see him in those white, white tidy whiteies. That dude does some squats. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> uh, but he sneaks out. Oh, I love, no, he tries, he's like, I'm constipated. You okay in there? Yeah. Constipation, man. I'm okay now. He explains he's constipated, that's why he's taking so long, and the guy keeps opening the door to it's look like, at hey, him. <laughs> hey, <laughs> While he's sitting, <laughs> shitting, uh, ostensibly shitting on the toilet, the guy just walks in, he's like, how you doing? Happy you understand Shakespeare, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, uh, Shakespeare, uh, you loner. You doing all right? It's hanging in there. Still working on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got family. Hey, Dennis Papa. Ask what I do and how much money I made each week. 
told him how much money I made, but I never told him what I did. Ryan makes a run for it and gets out and runs, jumps in a trash truck or something and gets away. At the same time, this rival gang shows up and we hear gunfire off camera and we assume they got into a big gunfight. We don't get to see any of it. Nope. And we never see nope. any of those people ever again. Nope. And again. Then, and then Ryan just runs off. Yeah, Ryan just runs away. And again, the idea, I get it. It's like, a, you know, the little vignettes. The, it's kind of like the Odyssey where it's like scene to scene and like an interesting thing happens and then we woo, move on to the next thing. But like. Mm -hmm. And Shakespeare's probably dead. And Shakespeare's probably dead. And his kid will never have a father and will grow up. Uh, probably a homeless urchin, street urchin. So. <laughs> and then he runs into Adam Sandler, the truck driver. I, he just reminded me of Adam so Sandler. It's, I don't understand what this was supposed to be. I thought this dr truck driver really wanted to fuck Ryan for a while. He was like making weird faces. I was expecting. I was expecting. Uh, was it Ash Cass? Gas? Yeah, yeah. Gas that, I was expecting ass. something was expecting like that. Like uh, here, put this on. It's getting cold. You want some trips? Back. You get nothing. He just is in the movie, is weird, and then leaves. Like mm -hmm. he like he like makes him eat chips. He's here, like, here, eat, eat my chips. chips. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be pretty pissed off if you don't eat and drink in my cab. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, you have some chips. They're good for you. I'm like, what is happening? All right. Um, and then there's like random fart noises inserted in this point. It, it's very strange. <laughs> Ryan just stumbles into like numerous jobs in this movie with zero like he doesn't enter. He just like shows up and they're like, I can give you a job. I can, I can see a waiter. At well, least. sure, right, at like a little restaurant. I couldn't see a concierge at a fucking a, hotel. Yeah, a fucking concierge at, at a hotel. It's like, all right, great. And then, so he's at this diner, and these cheerleaders are there. So these cheerleaders see him, and they're like, that's the guy that attacked Jenny. They have like a, a police sketch artist drawing, and they're like, that's the guy that attacked Jenny. Uh, and so they, this is my favorite thing, in full cheerleader costumes, kidnap, drug, Ryan, and why? That's a question for the director that I do not have an answer to. Again, I think he, they're supposed to probably be like sirens or who fuck. It, he's there's some sort of parallel between the Odyssey and these characters. I would imagine it's been forever since I've read any of the Odyssey. No, so I don't. No, no, I, no, I no, bet no, there's no. A, I bet there's some sort. Well, of, it, then they would try to allure him. Yeah, you're right. I didn't mean the siren specifically. I meant something like that. I'm just trying to come up with something that's uh, yeah. Um, but they drug him and they're gonna cut his dick off. But they bring Jenny in. We should cut his dick off, and then we hang it here. When he wakes up, he'll see the hanging dick. Who's he gonna tell his story to? The police? Jenny's on her way over. We should probably wait for her. And they're like, is this the guy? And she's like, no. And they're like, she fuck, did. and they leave. It's the wrong guy. It's the wrong guy! That guy had like a half an inch of hair when I tried to grab it. There's no way he could have grown this much hair in two days. And that's the end of that. It's <laughs> fucking amazing. They, they take him somewhere, don't they? They say, we'll drop him in the mountains, is what they say. They're like, shit, we don't know what to do, so we'll take him, we'll drop him in the mountains. They break into his apartment and drug him, and yeah. then they take him to the mountains so that he, I can't rat him out. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter. Not a bad looking guy, though. Lucky he didn't cut his dick off. What do we do? Come on, guys, what do we do? Why don't we... Take him out of state and dump him in the mountains. I think, yeah, he ends up in Arizona somehow. I, I don't, I'm not sure the geography of this movie exactly. adds up very well. But. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> he's, he's at a truck stop, right? Yeah, yeah, he's at a truck stop and he just walks out and there's a random Canadian guy. Who has the pin? He yeah, the Canadian. Yeah, he's like, uh, oh, you're Canadian? <laughs> Are you from Canada? Yeah, you? And I swear this, I think this might be the dude from earlier in the movie that Connie was like, hey, we're getting drinks. The bleached, because he's got the yes, bleached blonde yes. hair, and I was like, I that know, might it, it be It was him. also like the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, a lot of people had the bleached blonde hair. That's fair. Yeah, Saskatoon. I grew up in Saskatoon. Small world. He, I love the Canadian guy. The other Canadian guy in the convertible's like, hop in. And it's like, you didn't even know he needed 
to go any he didn't explain his situation he just said hi i'm also from canada and this guy's like hop in arizona yeah we're in arizona oh, phoenix hey fella hop in i'm like why where what no <laughs> <laughs> Why would I get in your car? And then this guy gives him a job. This is the guy that yes. gives him the hotel job, Which, I think. And then this is where we're introduced to the 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 prostitute, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's a prostitute, and she gets grabbed by her pimp, and he's she's not making enough money, and he, he says, "You look like a piece of shit." It's kind of hilarious the way it's delivered in the ADR. He's just like, "You look like a piece of shit." You look like a piece of shit. And and the, in that scene, it is clearly bright ass daytime yes. outside the car, yes. and then inside the car it is it's night. night. <laughs> You look like a piece of shit. Uh, he runs in, he meets this girl, he's, he starts talking to her and gets introduced to her daughter. She's a very sweet daughter and uh, her, she's on the run from her husband who tried to kill her, I think, or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, or who knows? She's on the run from her husband um, and she uh, they, they get a little montage of him and I'm like, oh, Maybe this is where is, the movie's is actually going. Is developing a life, yeah, basically? Yeah, yeah. Is that where this is movie going? That could be interesting. He, like, relocates and ends up start developing a life here. Um, and then he has to leave. Uh, but he's also... Uh, it's very strange. So he's a concierge, but he's also a bartender? Yes. They show him making drinks. I'm like, what is your fucking job? Just, like, whatever they need you to do that day, I guess. I was just out walking. What? Walking. This is very strange scene. He leaves this. They go on a date. Yeah. And he shows up to the table that they're going on a date at and goes, is this seat taken? Is this seat taken? What? Yeah, no. You guys are on a fuck. what? What? What's happening? Is he trying to be coy about it? Yeah, like, that would make sense as, like, a joke, but he does not remotely, they don't, like, go, ha, ha, ha. There's no, like, no acknowledgement of it, like, as, a, like, a little joke. She's and like, they, they, she's they, like they, no, sit down. Then she immediately gets into it, like, yeah. I've been abused. I've been abused, and he's like, we didn't even order pizza yet. <laughs> Is this seat taken? Well, maybe I should go. No, no. It's okay. He was a violent and abusive man. And then, I love, so she tells him all this, like, uh, stuff about her past, and at the end of the scene goes, I don't know why I'm telling you this, and then the scene just ends. I don't know why the hell I'm telling you this. Why? I don't know why you're telling us this movie. I don't understand why you're telling us. Great. You, you, you mean you won? He realizes he starts having weird visions of Connie and like realizing he loves her and misses her and wants to go back. I think is the idea. But in this moment, Kyle. I, I have a moment where my entire life flashed in front of my eyes. This <laughs> is a good recollect. They're like, what has led me to this moment in my life? Yeah, now that I think about it, he did come through here. Hello? Come on up, baby lion. Your dad's here. And then so uh, this this uh, the prostitute that he's befriended uh, her her boyfriend comes back her husband comes back and tries to uh, kidnaps the daughter and is gonna kill her. Her bastard husband showed up this morning and threatened to shoot that sweet little thing if Sam didn't come up with some cash. And then the cop shoot her, or not her shoot him. And I love <laughs> the the lady's like they shot him, they shot him dead. But he wouldn't put the gun down, so they shot him and they shot him dead. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan's reaction to all of this isn't like, oh, oh no, it's it's more like, oh, that sucks. But they shot him, and they shot him dead. Go back to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. He's like, nah, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm fucking uh, going back to Canada. He, he, he finds wherever, whatever hotel they're at now. This little girl is absolutely traumatized. Yeah. And the, the her father was shot dead in uh, presumably in front of her because I think she had her like kidnapped yes. basically. And, and, and the mother is like trying to console her and, yeah. and dealing with her own issues. Yeah. And he's just like, here's a teddy bear. Peace out. Well, who is she? She's traumatized and horrified. You take care, okay? Going home now. Oh, also, here's $20,000. <laughs> yeah. And, and so he, he goes, and I love, uh, so then we cut back, and Connie's uh, 
dad is, is talking to Ryan's mom, and I love the mom has this line. She turns to the dad and goes, do you want some coffee and talk? Do you want some coffee and talk? <laughs> do you want some coffee and talk? Do you want some coffee and talk? I think something might have been lost in translation Yeah, a little bit there. lost in translation there, it feels like. Do you want some coffee and talk? And then Ryan goes to Vegas. I thought we were, I was looking out for Mr. Not even Green. That, not even good Vegas. He went to no. the freaking Fremont area. Yeah. Uh, I was looking out for Neil, though, in the background. He does not make an appearance. Today of past regrets and future fears. Also, her dad rocks a Canadian tux this whole movie. <laughs> the denim on denim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never heard of You've never heard of it? Yeah, it's Canadian tux. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Denim on denim, baby. <laughs> and I love it. So Ryan's at this bar in Vegas, and he starts quoting Homer to the bartender. And the look on the bartender's face is like, huh. can you not quote put <laughs> like, Homer at like, me? Fill the cup that clears. Today of past regrets and future fears. Huh? Oh, okay. You're drunk. You probably shouldn't drive. Hey, do you want to make money doing yeah. a striptease? Yeah. I've got a cool gig lined up tonight. You interested in making some cash? No kidding. What kind of gig? Just imagine you, me, and 50 screaming chicks. He's like, you shouldn't drive. I got a job. You want to be a stripper for the night? <laughs> and then I'll, the most unbelievable thing in this entire film is that that blonde guy yes. who's the bartender is a male stripper what in this film. Like. <laughs> So this whole scene, this whole story is, duh. He gets there, there's a whole bunch of weird setup of like a- It's a, a amazing bachelor, uh, it's a bachelor bachelorette party. party, yeah. This is my bridal shower, you have no business being here. And the bride does not want her stepmother to yes. be there? Yes, and because her stepmother murdered her dad or something? She says you killed him. You know, the only reason I put up with you is because my father loved you. You killed my father. Get the hell out of here. Or something. I don't know. And by the way, the dad is like apparently a famous football player. Famous football player, which I misheard the when they introduced her. I thought the guy said her son was a famous football player. Mm -hmm. Ryan, this is Mrs. Teeson. Mrs. Mike Teeson, you know, greatest NFL quarterback of all time. Well, hello, Miss Thiessen. And then she starts fantasizing as Ryan as that football player. And I was like, oh, boy. Well, this would, this would fit in very well in uh, sort of <laughs> the Homer time period of, you know, the incestuous, like, mother weird, like, Oedipus type stuff going on here. But but she runs into Ryan and this bartender. Yeah. And she wants – she envisions him as a football player. Yes. And, and she, she wants is after all of that. She wants to fuck that football player. Ryan's going to be working with me tonight, so we'll see you later. Pleasure meeting you. Pleasure's all mine, Mike. And then she said, but she, what's very strange is the daughter or whatever, or the, the whoever, like the bride of honor or the maid of honor is like talking to the mom, like, just leave. Your daughter doesn't want you here. I'll send the boys over to your hotel room later. Why don't you just leave her alone tonight, okay? It's her night. I'll send the boys over to your hotel room later. You can pay them when they get there. So she's gonna send the strippers just to the mom's hotel. That would be, I feel like that would be very expensive because they're like in a club. They're in like a strip club, like the bridal party. And she's gonna pay for the strippers to go just to the mom's apartment room. It's very, or hotel room. It's very strange. I don't understand it at all. This is the last 15 minutes of the movie and there's like a 10 minute montage of dudes stripping. Yes. That is irrelevant to yes. anything. Is completely and irrelevant. They get, they get Ryan hammered. Yes, just they drug shocked and drugged. They push you see, and but it's what 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 is this? Explain. Okay, I didn't understand this at all. Who is the woman drugging him? It's not the mom. When She's the, not there. The person who said I'm gonna send. Yeah, yeah. So what she meant by that was that I'm gonna drug a stripper and 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 send them to your what? What I. It's the it's like the most casual like I'm gonna drug this person and so you can rape them but like there's he's like no no don't worry mom or uh, mother of the bride I'm gonna drug this stripper and you can have your way with them later don't mess up our bachelorette party. Just like my Mike, everyone must like you. 
And then we want uh, oh the stripping happens, and then he he gets drugged and he takes to oh, oh I forgot his and word. this is where he's wearing the Canadian, Canadian boxers. I was just gonna say he's wearing glorious Canadian boxers. <laughs> And this is where the point where I'm like, okay, there's t- he at this point now. There's ten minutes left in the movie. He has just been drugged and sexually assaulted by a woman. Nobody in this whole town likes me. And then he just leaves, and, and she's, she's dead. Dead. Sorry, she's dead. And then he leaves. He knows she's dead. I'm like, bro. Your DNA is all over that hotel room, dude. <laughs> Fucking everywhere. I'm like, I didn't even think about that. You do not just leave that situation. <laughs> but, but, but this immediately. Con- this continues his problem of not going to the authorities yes, for anything. Anything, anything at all. Um, but, but luckily for him, he leaves and immediately, like earlier, we get another radio news story in the car going. 59 year old. Barbara Thiessen, the recent widow of the former national football star Mike Thiessen, was found dead of a massive heart attack. Foul play is not suspected. No foul play is suspected. And he's like, woo! (laughs) (laughs) So good. She's found naked in a bed. Yeah. The autopsy will reveal that she was intimate at yeah. the time. Yeah. No, no foul play. That's fine. We don't even need to worry. We don't even need to try to figure out who the dude or who the person in the room with her. Nah, it's fine. She's an old lady. She just died. She does say she wants to die, so it went out. She's like, I wish All I could right. go out. I wish I could go out on top, and she does. He died a happy man. I only wish I could die that way. Well, she might have been on bottom. We don't know. We don't get to see the sex, so. So he's now in Canada right now? Yes. He gives a call yes. to his mother and Connie picks up because yeah. she's there yeah. with his whole apology thing. Sorry that I, my dad went crazy and tried, tried to, to kill, kill you. you. Yeah. And that I tried to kill myself or whatever. And I, and, and also, <laughs> I also got to mention when he, when he hears that news story about her being dead, he just like chuckles at it. He's like, no. <laughs> Police are now trying to determine is what Mrs. Thiessen was doing in a motel room. 40 miles away from home. This is Paul Norton reporting live from the Early Bird Motel. What a story. <laughs> like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're so weird. Um, but yeah, so he's going home and he says, uh, I'm coming home for you, babe, or something like that. Hence the name of the film. I'm coming home for you, babe. Um, so he's coming home for, and I was like, I really hope he just gets hit, like, fucking T-boned by a semi and dies. <laughs> like, that's how this movie ends. No, we it's, get it's even, even weirder. weirder. It's even fucking weirder. As, Woman on the side of the road, yes. hitchhiking. Yeah. And I don't understand what any of this is. No. He picks her up. She flips off the cops as they're driving and says, I hate these pigs. Mm-hmm. And then, so the cop turns well, she's around. She's also very secure. To, like, has, she's very protective oh, of, of her, her purse. purse. Yeah. Let me throw this in the bag for you. Don't you touch that bag. And as he gets pulled over by the cops, he gets pulled over, and then we hear the cops' radio. Mm. And it says, uh, a woman and a man just robbed a bank, I think it was. We have a girl reported missing. Tall, blonde hair, dark eyes. Accompanied by a male, tall, dark hair. They're carrying stolen cash and jewelry. Uh, They're on the run. A blonde woman and then a a dark-haired guy. And now, again, it's another instance of mistaken identity. But this is so strange. The guy pulls him out of the car to arrest him. The cop is like, oh, you're wanted for this crime. Turn around, face the vehicle, put your hands behind your back, please. Handcuffs him. The girl doesn't do anything with the girl who was also mentioned as being yeah, wanted well, by him. But he was the driver. And, it, and, it's implied that she gets arrested right, too right, right, right. the officer is like, yeah, stay in the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, stay in the vehicle. But so then she steps, gets out of the car looks at him and says love you Ryan love you Ryan and he laughs and the movie ends what 
Well, how is that the end that's of the movie? Not even a, there's nothing that's resolved. How is that the end of the movie? How the fuck is that the end of the movie? It is the... It is... It is... The movie, I was like, wait, what? We don't get a, any... Nothing. And who is this woman? And why does she know his name's Ryan? How does she... Is she, I thought, is that the girl from the beginning? It's, but it's, it's not. It's like a fever dream. It's... I... I... I don't know what the fuck is going on, man. This is the weirdest. It it really truly just ends. Somebody had an idea. It, this is uh, this movie, and I I'll, I'll just basically pitch my point on this. This film was ruined by rewrites. <laughs> they they might have had an idea, but they kept wanting to add stuff, and eventually you're wearing three hats on top of your other hat, and you look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, and and they realized they couldn't they. Why doesn't it end, Kyle? It doesn't end. I mean, it does. It very abruptly ends. But Ryan, why? Ryan's babe, part two. Oh God! If there's a fucking that would be, you know, they should make it. They could absolutely leave it open for a sequel, uh, and it would be delightful. Um, oh, I just realized this DVD has special features. There's an interview with the writer director. Oh no! And a bonus film. He made another one in 1998 called Seetha and Carol. Okay. We may have another, another film. film out of this. I didn't realize there was two movies. Those crazy in Canadians. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Ryan's made guys. It's good, bad, duh. Like yeah. holy shit, it's wild. It is a wild ass movie. Uh, it's only an hour and twenty eight minutes. Uh, fucking DVD. Ten minutes of that is dude stripping. So if you're into that. <laughs> You got a good 10 minutes at the end, uh, but the it's truly delightful. The ADR is what makes this film. It is pretty glorious. It's freaking nonsense, but it's glorious, glorious nonsense. Kyle, they can support us on Patreon, right? Of course they can. Yes. I also wanted to thank Mr. Colin for doing that glorious intro for us. You're truly uh, maybe the best Canadian. I don't know. I don't know many of them. So... <laughs> As, as of the three Canadians that I, I guess at this point worked with, if we want to consider this work with nah, Colin, probably not. Not really. Um, you're definitely the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, folks. <laughs> with that one. I keep going to turn the camera off, but you just keep laughing like an idiot. <laughs>